Hello and welcome to the next video in our series of videos all about how you as a parent can support your little one with reading at home. So we're moving on from our red colour band in our previous video up to our yellow colour band. Now yellow, when we're reading yellow books it's a very exciting time for us in reception because we see the children starting to achieve lots of elements of the early learning goal. Something we aim for all of our children to achieve by the end of reception. So we're going to look at a typical yellow book now. So you can see here, as I said, this is a typical yellow reading book. To give you an example of what your child will be reading when they get to this level. And also you can start to see the difference between a red book and a yellow book as well. So we're going to talk about that in a bit more detail now. So when children are reading those yellow reading books, they're going to be using their phase three tricky words and their phase four tricky words to read them on site. So again, we provide you with those phase three and phase four tricky word bookmarks to keep with your child's reading book at home and just glance through them quickly before they start to look at their book. It really helps to promote their independence to read those tricky words on site. So again, they're fresh in their mind and they grow in confidence as soon as they spot them in the text. So the most commonly asked question I always get around these reading books when we're moving on to that yellow level is the books have got quite a bit longer and we want to hold their attention. So when we introduce a yellow reading book, quite often in school, we'll do something called a walkthrough. And I'm gonna show you how we do that now. It's something you'll be able to do at home. It's really simple. And it also helps you massively with developing their vocabulary. So I'm going to show you how to do a walkthrough with a book like this. This is the Scrap Rocket, a nice yellow book. Now the Scrap Rocket is a great one because you can see, obviously they'll know the tricky word the, they'll be able to see that he's designed a rocket here, hasn't he? But maybe they've not come across the word scrap. So it might be worth taking some time to look at the word scrap and see if they can work out what that actually means. So look at the pictures. He's got, oh, he's got a television there that's a bit broken. Oh, an old washing machine. That looks a bit like a skip. Maybe it's a recycling centre. Oh, I wonder what scrap could mean. So gives them that chance using those visual cues to work it out for themselves. As you turn the page, you've got Ron Rabbit. Look at him, he's looking for things, isn't he? And Ron Rabbit's in a lot of these Songbirds books, so they'll probably have come across him before in our red colour band. Now, here we've got that word again, haven't we? Can you see it? Oh, look, there's scrap again, isn't it? And what's underneath? Scrap metal. Ooh, metal. Scrap metal. Oh, what do you think's made from metal? So again, another lo a lovely way to look at the book. Now, as we turn the page here, it's very easily decodable. So obviously he's collecting a tin, a tap, a pot, a lid. So all of that vocabulary they should be familiar with. Again, with the plug, they've got that consonant blend there p and all at the beginning. So you can see they've got plug and they've got the visual cue to help them with that consonant blend. And again, it might be worth stopping on something like plank. Some children might not use the word plank to describe this piece of wood. They might just simply call it a piece of wood, a floorboard. Maybe they might say something like, oh, it's a, like a stick or like a bit of a tree. So plank could be something you might want to hone in on using with them to explain what that means. Again, a pump. You might have a balloon pump they've seen before as well as the bike pump. Collecting a spring, a strap and lots of string. And again, just walking through the book, drawing their attention to some of those words they might not have come across before. So something in this one would be fun because there's lots of lovely noises you can use with those consonant blends as well. And you can say, oh, what noise do you think that hammer would be making with a nail into that wood? Bang, bang. Oh, can you find a word? Where does it say bang, bang? Oh, yes, I can see it at the top. Look, there's an exclamation mark. What does that mean? That's right. We can shout it, can't we? So, oh, what about this one here? The nail going into the top of the metal pan lid. What do you think that could be doing? What noise do you think that could make? So again, clink, clink is something they possibly might not use in their everyday language. Again, crank, crank, you might want to draw their attention to as well. Now, as you turn the page, you can see, obviously, he's made his rocket now. Look at Ron looking super proud. And then turning the page again. What do you think that rocket's doing? Lift off. So again, giving them lots of visual cues to work out that consonant blend of lift. Another word you can draw their attention to on this page would be something like thrill. They probably wouldn't use thrill in their everyday language at this stage, so it's worth unpicking that to see what they actually think it means. 
giving them examples to say maybe a thrill might be something where you've climbed up really high into a tree and you've looked down and you can feel your heart beating really fast and you can see Ron Rabbit there really excited isn't he because he's going up 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 in his rocket as well now what happens next oh his rocket's coming down isn't it <gasps> what noise do you think it'll make as it hits the water oh my goodness look it's a splash isn't it <gasps> but look ron's thinking that's not a rocket anymore what do you think he's made so before you turn the page see if they can predict what do you think is going to happen as you turn the page, you can say, oh my goodness, it's not just sunk under the water, has it? What's it turned into? It's a submarine. That's right. So I really hope showing you how we do that walkthrough in school will show you how you can do it at home. It really helps with your little one and their understanding of their text. So when we move on to these yellow books, they're obviously using all of those skills that they've learned, that segmenting, that blending, recognising digraphs and trigraphs, reading those high frequency words and those tricky words on sight, and now really starting to hone in on some of that vocabulary that might not have been so familiar to them. So drawing their attention to that in a simple walkthrough means when they come to decode the text the next time you revisit the book, so it might be the following day, it might be straight after if they've got great concentration that day you might sit and you say right so what did we say this was oh it was the scrap rocket it will really speed up their reading and you know what they can see that they can do it all by themselves they know what those unfamiliar words are now they understand what they mean and they can apply them in their reading much more quickly this time so another question I've been asked a lot recently is about how we can support our children with reading a B or a D and them getting it mixed up so the first thing I would say, letter formation is key here. So when we are actually forming the letter, we make sure we say that right every single time. So we say we start at the top of the boot, we go down the boots, back up halfway and around the toe. The dinosaur letter, we go around the dinosaur's bottom, up to his head and down to his feet. Now on lots of text you'll see with our dinosaur letter there'll be a tail, there'll be the lead out so you can actually see the difference between a B and a D. B is often straight and a D has got the lead out so you can see the difference in the text sometimes that can help them so I say dinosaurs have got a tail. However not all text helps us in that way so another really easy way and the children love this is by using our hands it's really simple and obviously when they're reading it's there it's readily available for them so I'll show you how we do it with a book like this. So here you can see the pages we've got bang bang again looking at that letter is it a B is it a D so we form with our hands and our thumbs up like this our fists clenched we put those two fists together and we make the word bed. The children sound this out going from left to right. So they go b, e, d, b, e, d. And they match the shape of the B to their, their hand on the left hand side. So you can see here, is it a B? Yes, that's right. That's the same, isn't it? And the same on the other page. So b, e, d. Again, making it with both hands. Which one does it match? Oh, look, can you see? That's right, that's D, so that will be prod there, won't it? Really simple and really easy. The children love this because as they're reading, they've got their hands readily available. And just sometimes they just need a little bit of reinforcement to make sure we say the B, E, D, put it in order, put our hands together and hold it up in front of those letters where we might get the wrong way round. I really hope you found this video useful to support your child with reading yellow reading books at home. If you have, please don't forget, you can give it a thumbs up and also you can comment down below on what you'd like to see on our next video. You can subscribe to our whole Church of England Primary School channel completely free and also you'll get an alert that way when our next video goes live. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Bye bye.